Case Files of the Tracker by Tom Brown Jr. Chapter 1, The Science and Art of Tracking Narrated by Weasel Bear She doesn't even know that she's lost yet, Grandfather said, his statement taking me by surprise. I followed his finger to the ground, and there was a small child's track, faintly depressed into the debris. I could barely see the track, and really had no idea what he was talking about. After all, I had only known Grandfather for a few months, and until this point I had only tracked local wildlife and clear soil situations. At first I had no idea why he was pointing this track out for me to see, until his statement finally sank into my mind and seemed to make sense. Still, I was amazed at the amount of information Grandfather was able to discern from this one track. Somehow he knew that this child was unaware that she was lost at this point in the track. I wondered how Grandfather knew that this child was lost, since to me the track appeared to have been made hours before. His statement should not have surprised me, for Grandfather was always full of mysteries and strange statements such as this. After all, Grandfather was a paradox, an anachronism, and a bridge that led from the world everyone else lived in to the world of the wilderness that I so loved. Grandfather's wisdom spanned across time and brought the ancient world into the context of the present. He was the grandfather of my best friend Rick and was called Stalking Wolf, but we only knew him as grandfather. Ultimately, he became my best friend and for the better part of 10 years and losing him was like losing my own grandfather. His vision had led him here to the New Jersey's Pine Barrens, far from his people, to teach a young white coyote. Little did I know that the white coyote was to be me. Through all those years, he taught me to survive in pure wilderness with nothing at all. He taught me levels of awareness that far transcended all human limitation and he led me into the vast spiritual world of things unseen and eternal. Most of all, he taught me to be a tracker and all the wisdom and philosophy that a tracker stands for. He taught me to read the earth like an open book and to unravel her mysteries. He opened the world to me in a wondrous and spiritual new way. Grandfather became my doorway, my vehicle, which took me back to the earth and I became a child of the earth again, no longer an alien to my own planet. I became a caretaker and healer of the earth through his teachings. Yet, as I now look back, very few could have learned from grandfather, for he was a coyote teacher. He handed me nothing. Instead, he demanded that I work hard for the truth and find answers by myself. Unlike modern teaching that spells out every detail, coyote teaching demands a passion to search for answers. If I was without that passion, grandfather would not teach. That is why I am forever amazed when I look back on this day, that moment of time with grandfather. In the span of an hour, and through that little lost girl's single track, I learned everything I needed to know about tracking and being a tracker. He gave me the wisdom and answers needed to become a tracker and the passion needed to follow that very difficult path. So there we sat side by side on an obscure path in the Pine Barrens, an 83-year-old displaced Apache and a seven-year-old little boy, an unlikely pair to say the very least. How do you know that she doesn't know she's lost yet, I asked. He remained silent for a long time, then said, The earth has told me, her track has told me, and my heart has told me. Little did I know that this question and answer were the beginning of the grandest gift of wisdom I would ever learn at one time from Grandfather. My question and his answer unleashed a remarkable chain of events, an avalanche of knowledge and tracking, yet we would never have to move from that first track. To this very day, I have never experienced tracking like that again, and I have never been able to come close to doing what Grandfather had done that day, 
even with being a tracker and instructor for 45 years. Grandfather tracked that little girl without moving from that first track, and through that track, he unraveled the mysteries of tracking. The earth told you? I asked. Grandfather waited before answering, closing his eyes and listening to the faint wind in the trees. I wondered if he was trying to choose his words or he was searching out my heart. But his answer awakened me to things I had no idea existed. He replied with his own question, Grandson, have you ever dropped a stone into quiet waters? Yes, I answered. Well, what happens next, grandson? I remembered thinking for a moment, a little confused, and wondering what he was really asking. I sheepishly said, There's a splash, grandfather. And? he asked. I thought again, grappling in my mind for what happens next. I had thrown hundreds of stones, maybe thousands, and I sat there dumbfounded. All manner of thought raced through my mind. I almost panicked because I could not think of what comes next, what more he could be asking. Then suddenly I realized I could see it in my mind, and I blurted out, a wave. That's right, grandson, he said, but it's not just a wave, but a ring that moves out from the splash. And have you seen so often, it's followed by another ring, and another, and another, until it finally comes to rest on the shore. Nature is like that, grandson, he continued. For the whole of creation is as the waters. When something moves in the natural world, it disturbs something else. A fox that is walking in the woods creates a major splash in the waters of life. Birds send out alarm calls. Chipmunk die for their holes. Mice run for cover. And all is in turbulence. Yet it does not end there. Like the concentric rings of the water, it moves along the land like a ripple, disturbing more and more until it comes to rest on the shores of a tracker's ear. That is how the earth told me that the little girl is now lost, grandson, he said. I was stunned, no, shocked and amazed at this statement. He knew that this little girl was now lost because these concentric rings of nature had told him. I could only imagine what wondrous new worlds that would open up, what I could know about the forest at greater and greater distances. At that moment, I also realized that this is why Grandfather had stopped so often on our journeys. It was in these stops that he would listen intently to the concentric rings of life and the voice of Earth that were telling him. I was inspired, and I desperately wanted to ask him more, but I really didn't know what to ask. Finally, out of sheer desperation, I blurted out, but how did you know that the little girl did not know she was lost yet when she made the track? Yet again, there was a long period of silence before he spoke. Finally, he said, because grandson, her track told me she does not know that she is lost at this place. I was now even more amazed, and I asked, But how did the track tell you? Grandfather answered, The body of any human or animal is always struggling to remain upright, to stay balanced, as it moves across the earth. To do so, there is a system of checks and balances. Each movement, no matter how small, must be compensated for. What do you mean? I asked. He smiled. Close your eyes and touch your nose with your hand, but pay attention to what your whole body does. It wasn't an answer at all, but I immediately did what he asked, and suddenly my question was somehow answered. But I didn't know how. Overjoyed, I said, my whole body moved. Yes, grandson, your whole body moved to adjust and compensate for your movement so that you would remain seated upright. It is the same with all things and with all movement. He did not wait for me to ask the next question. Tracks are not lifeless depressions in the earth, grandson. Tracks are more than a window back in time. 
They are a window into the very soul. In all tracks, there's a tiny universe where all the body's movements are recorded. It is like a little landscape. Hills and valleys, ridges and peaks, pocks and domes, thousands of them, each one indicating some small movement in the body and mind. Together, my people call these little landscapes pressure releases, and there are thousands of pressure releases to be known and understood. It is in the voice of these pressure releases that the track tells me that the little girl does not know that she is lost. I was riveted to his every word. I had never thought about a track being more than an identification mark and something to follow. Tracks were just depressions in the ground, but now grandfather was telling me that there were more, much more. I was so excited at this, all I could do was sit there and try to digest what he had just given me. Grandfather smiled and then he said, I also know that this girl is 31 pounds. She's right-handed. She's had some food, but she's now growing thirsty. He continued on and on about this little girl as if he were watching her walk by right now. But he could read deeper than just the superficial. It was as if he was reading right into her soul, just like he had said. In a way, to grandfather, the track was also like being able to read the little girl's mind. I felt overwhelmed, yet I had to ask more. Again, I blurted out what I thought was a stupid question. How does your heart know that she's lost, grandfather? The same way I know that in a few moments she will find her parents, grandfather responded. I was baffled by his answer until he continued saying, as I have told you, there's a life force that moves through all of creation. My people call this force the spirit that moves in and through all things. And it is this life force that I listen to with my heart. It is this life force that tells me that she is moving closer to home, recognizing even now her own backyard. It is this life force, this spirit that runs through in all of us. It runs through you and me, all of creation, the earth, the sky, and even to the Creator. You are part of it, and it is part of you. Thus, if you know how to listen to this force through your heart, you too could feel this little girl move within you as you move within her and all things of earth and spirit. In the distance, I could hear faint screams of laughter. Just as Grandfather finished talking, I watched a smile move across his face as he heard the laughter also. I was amazed. He was right. And I heard her the echo of the concentric rings now too. Grandfather did not wait for more questions, but said, as you put your finger into this track, you are pointing to the little girl's track. You are connected to her. And the track is like the end of a string. And at the far end, a being is moving. As you pick up that track, you pick up the string and you become a tracker. A tracker follows the mysteries of life, even those that lead to the unseen and internal worlds of spirit. A tracker once is all things and all things are the tracker. Now that you have seen the mysteries unfold, it has become your journey and vision to become a tracker. For once you have touched the wisdom, there can be no turning back from the path. Welcome, grandson, to my world. With those words, on that day, my life began. <laughs>